Bronco back in 2021, back in August. And in the time since then, we've done quite a few videos about all the things that have gone wrong with our Bronco, but today, we're bringing the love. With eight months of Bronco ownership under our belts, there are a bunch of features we've grown to love. Here are a few. But first, information explosion. By the way, the point of this video is that when we review a car, oftentimes we have it for a week, and that's uh, enough time to get a sense of it. But when you live with a vehicle, like we've lived with this Bronco, man, you really know what sucks and what's awesome. Item number one the thumb anchor for the infotainment screen. We've got the basic eight inch screen here, but this little spot right here makes it so easy to use the screen in motion. I won't talk about this with nearly the passion you do. That was a feature you got super excited about. You know what it is? It's because when I drive, it's a little bit more dynamic and I need a good solid anchor for my hand. And what I hate is I've driven enough cars where they have a screen, but nowhere to position yourself. And then you're just kind of awkwardly trying to push a screen while you're moving. Yeah. But this, um, having an anchor point, really makes the screen more usable. The dynamic driving is an excellent point. <laughs> Sweetie's pretty chill. <laughs> The next feature we really like is the width of the second row. And that sounds like a weird one, but uh, tell them why it's awesome. We've driven other two row SUVs and it's actually hard to cram Nana, myself, and our kid in a booster. But we all fit wonderfully well in the back of the Bronco. One of the goals with having the Bronco was to be able to go out with family, even if we're not going off road, just like driving around town, being able to get uh, my parents in here along with kiddo and us uh, with plenty of room to spare and nobody's on top of each other or awkward. Uh, it, we really learned to love that. And our point of reference, by the way, was a Jeep Gladiator, which we drove for about eight months prior to this. And uh, yeah, the Bronco, much wider. The next item we've really grown to appreciate are the GOAT modes. These are just basically the drive modes that uh, Ford gives the Bronco. I will say I have used the um, sport mode once, and that was kind of the extent of it. I don't really make use of sport mode or eco mode, uh, but for off-roading, especially if you're a beginner, being able to go to a situationally defined mode is pretty helpful, right? So helpful for me, especially figuring out what to do when it's slippery and snowing, knowing that I just go to slippery and that is it. <laughs> oh yeah, we gotta give props to slippery mode. It actually works really well. So for you, it just feels confident, right? It does. <laughs> There's the little icicles. And I know the car is doing everything it can to deal with the snow. Yes, on my side, um, I'm a little bit more experimental and I've um, tried things like, okay, let's just uh, induce understeer where you're turning and the car is sliding and see if slippery mode corrects that. And it does. It, it's not just like uh, one of those modes where, oh, you're getting a little slippery. Let's just shut down the engine and like uh, like uh, add the brakes. It really kind of tries to point you where you want to go. And also add to that uh, the Sasquatch package that we have on our Bronco, the tires that came with it have pretty great grip in snow and ice. Um, it's all very confident feeling um, when we uh, drive around in the mountains up here. We mentioned the off-road capabilities using the GOAT modes, um, the sand and the uh, mud and ruts work, work really well. The elements that came with the Bronco Sasquatch that we have, the electronic locking differentials. Oh yes, we've attempted to take some vehicles off-road that do not have that and it's a real struggle to get up certain areas and then the Bronco will just power right through it. When you're out here uh, where we live in the mountains where you might have a moment and where like a tire's up in the air, as soon as you get a tire off the ground, having a, an electronic locker makes all the difference in the world. If you don't believe me, look at this clip. <laughs> and that's Evie driving, by the way. So if a year ago I said, you're gonna have a strong opinion about electronic locking differentials, you would have said, Micah, you're crazy. But look at you now. That's right. Every time you mentioned one in a review for KBB that I was editing, I had to look up what the heck that was. Uh-huh, first you'd yawn, and then you'd be like, oh, I gotta figure out what this is. But now you love them. Now I love them. Talking about surprisingly positive features, what do you think about the soft top? 
I love this soft top. What I love about it is that you do not have to remove the entire thing every time you want to use it. You can very quickly and easily um, undo each of these latches and flop it back. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just to prove the point. Just that easy. And it makes such a difference when you're driving around to be able to enjoy the sunshine without a lot of effort because I don't think I would spend the time and effort it would take to remove the soft top completely. We museums are a lazy breed and so yeah, there is something to um, making the smallest barrier to entry to have a fun experience. The way the soft top works, you've got that first position, it just sort of flops right back. Um, you can go to a second position where it's even more open, but you have to remove the side windows. I actually have done that on one or two occasions. And then if you're feeling really bold, you can take the entire soft top off. I've never had an occasion where I thought that was um, something I needed to do. But um, I think the key takeaways are that uh, that easy access to open air driving is uh, more fun than you might have expected and we really like it. A couple of caveats though. We live in the mountains almost everywhere we drive. We're driving at 30 miles an hour right now. This is pretty typical. So if you're on the freeway. I had forgotten how loud a soft top on the freeway could be, but yesterday I went out and I couldn't understand a word my girl was saying to me. So it works wonderful at low speeds here in the mountains, but I might have to consider that choice more carefully if we did a lot of freeway driving. Yeah. The last thing I'll mention about the top is that we um, had that gladiator for a good long while and uh, that soft top was much louder than this soft top. Totally. So there's a lot of stuff to think about with the uh, soft top. <laughs> it may make you drop your pony. Oh, and I'm never one to turn away a good segue. With all the sun in our eyes, it's a great opportunity to talk about Flying Eyes sunglasses. I have their new white Ospreys. We wear these in the helicopter. They're made out of this special material called Resilamide. In fact, they have a uh, utility patent to use this material, so it's specific to Flying Eyes. But uh, they can make these very, very thin temples that don't mess with our headsets, uh, the noise cancellation properties, and they're just really, really comfortable. They're bendable. Look, you can do this, and they don't break. <laughs> and, sweetie, you wear them as your daily glasses, right? My glasses are from their ophthalmic line and they come with tinted removable magnetic lenses that I can add whenever I need sunglasses, but they are a very comfortable, lightweight choice for everyday use. If you guys are interested in having some aviation grade sunglasses, click the link in the description below. You'll save 10% if you use the promo code MICA, flying eyes. One other feature that I really appreciate is having remote start. So when it snows up here, rather than getting into a cold vehicle, you can start it from the warmth of your home with the fire roaring and then go out to a pre-warmed vehicle. And I think that might be one of the reasons why having a soft top, even in winter, isn't so bad because the vehicle's pre-warmed. Oh, one other feature you really like, the keypad. I use that all the time. It's so handy for when you want to go and be totally unencumbered by carrying things, including your keys. When you lock the car with the keypad, it disables the fob and locks all the doors. And then when you return, all you have to do is key in your coat. Easy peasy. And uh, we moved it from the door position to underneath the fuel filler. I'm not typically an I told you so guy, but for those who thought we might destroy <laughs> our vehicle with a massive uh, 1980s action movie style explosion, we have not, at least not yet. Keep waiting. Another item we got specifically for Evie and our daughter was the Sweetie Step. I've made a lot of use of the Sweetie Step. It is actually a pretty high height to get in here. Yeah, the Bronco Sasquatch if... sits, sits very tall. So um, having the step to get in works great. I actually like that it's always there because I I'm impatient and I hate waiting for the steps that lower every time you open the door. Yeah, and we're not doing hardcore rock crawling True. with this thing. So uh, having like rock sliders hasn't proven, um, you know, something that like we really, really need. At some point, maybe we'll swap these out for a rock slider um, step combo. But for right now, they work great and my ladies can get in the Bronco with ease. Excuse me for a moment. It's getting a little warm. I'm putting the top back up. When we bought our Bronco, one of the debates was do we go with the Big Ben trim, which we did, or do we upgrade to the Outer Banks? And one of the differences was just the signature headlights. As I've seen more Broncos driving around with these signature headlights, I realized I prefer the standard headlights that came on our car. It's got the amber element, and ironically, to me, the basic headlights feel a little bit more distinct. I know that's a personal preference, but I really like the standard ones. I agree. I think it looks great. And then the last item, speaking of aesthetics, 
cactus gray paints. We had the only Bronco um, for many miles in all directions for a good long while. Um, but now that I'm seeing other Broncos, I still really think that the cactus gray is the right choice. Every time I see the Bronco, depending on the light, it looks a little bit different. It's like, oh, it's kind of greenish today. It's a little more gray. Oh, that's kind of cool. Um, I really am happy with the uh, cactus gray paint. What do you guys think? Do you like the cactus gray paint? Or do we make a big mistake not getting the color that you prefer? <laughs> Tell us in the comments. So far, owning the Bronco, we've had some minor issues, which we kind of expected with a first year vehicle, but we've also had some major delights. Overall, I think it's been a really positive ownership experience. Feel free to subscribe if you're curious about our Bronco ownership experience, our helicopter adventures, or if you enjoy family-focused car reviews. Well, good job, everybody. Let's end this video in the traditional museo way with a round of high fives. Five, five, and you can get your high five. Ah!